G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I got a comment on one of my previous videos which uh, has stuck with me because uh, someone got really angry when I mentioned the fact that maybe prices would go up in the astronomy, telescope, astrophotography world. But you know, I think we're at that point where I've been vindicated. An email went out just today, at least it got leaked to the internet just today. And I'm not gonna post the email because I can't verify it, but it's from a big telescope company and it's two distributors, I think. Uh, basically saying that they are, they are ceasing all deliveries. They can't ship, they can't price anything because the trade war and the fact that we log in every day and there's a new trade amount and uh, nobody knows what's going on at the borders. Plus America is trying to put a, a new fee on Chinese made ships or any company that even owns a Chinese made ship, uh, which is gonna put a big dent in shipping to America as well. Plus all of our supply chains sort of run from China to America for a lot of this stuff, especially in the mass market. So I feel like our little hobby, the telescope industry, this small $1 billion industry is a bit of a canary in the coal mine for this sort of stuff because we have companies which iterate quite rapidly and are sending stuff from China or it gets manufactured all over the place. So I did some digging to find out what brands get manufactured where and I just wanted to share this information just in case you're thinking about this too or you're one of my American friends who is affected by all of this. I don't want to talk about any side of the politics, I just want to show you what I dug up. So here's a list of all the major brands and their product types, mass market, high-end consumer, we got you know, we've got some real uh, boutique kind of companies and professional high-end ones and even the military ones as well. Now Obviously, stuff gets manufactured a lot in China, especially in the mass market. We're talking Celestron, Skywatcher, even Mead and Orion before they went defunct were manufacturing primarily out of there. There is some manufacture still in the USA, but most of the bulk of the telescope is made in China. I also wanted to split out the research into the metal source uh, because a lot of the raw materials that we use to build a telescope uh, come from various different countries and it's not always China. And in fact, you can see some of the high-end space and defense optical is all manufactured and sourced with materials in the USA. You can see Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, all the high-end stuff, you know, the stuff that us consumers don't have access to, a lot of it can be done within the USA. But, you know, not all of us are going to buy a plane wave telescope. Not all of us can afford a plane wave telescope. So that's a hard one. Now, the camera manufacturers I find really interesting because we think about ZWO and QHY as Chinese manufacturers, and they are. It's a Chinese company. But remember, the sensors are Sony sensors, and these are from Japan. So that arguably is the most important part of the camera. Now, I feel like ZWO and QHY and Player One maybe have the market kind of stitched up. If America is the biggest market for ZWO and QHY cameras, uh, you'd have to wonder, does this open up an opportunity for someone to be building cameras with Sony sensors outside of China? Interestingly, for the high-end stuff as well, there are sensors and uh, chip fabs uh, operating from America as well. So there is an opportunity there. But do these companies even want to get into the mass market? Is this little $1 billion market really nothing for them to even think about when they're too busy building big space telescopes and professional observatories. Now glass sourcing is interesting. There is a glass industry in China and a lot of glass does come from there, but a lot of glass, if you notice in this column, comes from Germany and Japan. But the reason I've been thinking about all of this is because of that old idea of can anyone make a pencil these days? And this is the question where you think, yeah, a pencil feels like a really simple piece of equipment. But these days, a pencil is made by a number of different companies. Someone is mining the graphite, someone is logging the forests for the wood, someone else is making the paint, someone else is doing the manufacturing and stamping, and then that's not even getting into delivery and logistics and supply chain stuff across the world. We are an integrated international world of trading, and we build things that are greater than the sum of their parts because we all have this cooperative trade. So I think even if the leaked email isn't true or isn't is unverified it's kind of true in the sense that this is coming down the pipeline and it's coming down the pipeline now there will be big vendors and big brands here that will have to not price their stuff not announce shipping and they can't because every day 
there's a new tariff price or a new salvo in the trade war being fired off. I got the sense from watching and talking to people at NEEF this year that no one was able to announce when they were going to ship all of these new devices or what they were even going to be priced at because it's hard to do that right now. And it's this kind of uncertainty that unsettles all markets, not just telescopes. But like I say, I feel like we're the canary in the coal mine here and this is starting now. I feel like perhaps in Australia, I may be a little bit insulated here because we do take direct shipments from China a lot of the time. So it's possible that if China looks away from America as a trading partner, that maybe the world, the rest of the world will be flooded with cheap Chinese stuff, which works out great for people on the lower end of the mass market hobby of astrophotography. But I do worry about my friends in America being isolated. There's also the other idea that um, it is very cheap to build things and they build things at such a high quality level in China. Can you replicate that in America? Even with a 100% tariff, can you still beat that Chinese price? I don't have any insight there, but I think it would be hard. If you can manufacture a shirt for $1 in China and it goes up to $2, it's still cheaper than the $20 it's going to cost you to manufacture that shirt in the States. Whether that's right or whether that's proper, I don't know. I'm not an economist. Maybe I do need to stick to what I know about, but what I do know about is astronomy and telescopes. And that's why I wanted to break down that manufacturing. And I think we can talk about it without pledging allegiance to any particular government or wing. At the end of the day, I just want to take photos of space and I'm sure you guys do too. And hopefully we can do that together. Right now, if I was invited to NEEF, I'd have to really think, uh, am I brave enough to even get on a plane when people are being detained at LAX for no reason? So it's a bit of a worrying state of affairs. And I'm sure whatever political persuasion you have, I think we can all agree this is a bit of a rough patch for everyone involved. Um, maybe you think the rough patch is worth it. Maybe you don't. I'm not going to go into that with this particular video. Uh, I just wanted to share some of that research and discuss the drama. If you have any insights about all of this, or maybe you work for some of these companies, please leave some comments down below. Uh, I feel like uh, we don't get to talk about this stuff candidly enough. And at this point, it may be something that starts to affect all of us very, very soon. That's it for this video. No fancy editing or a proper episode. I just wanted to have a discussion with you guys. And uh, I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, Everything is meaningless. We're all going to die. 威胁和讹诈不是从中方打交道的正确方式。美方如果真的想谈，就应该拿出平等、尊重、互惠的态度。如果美方置两国和国际社会的利益不顾，执意打关税战、贸易战，中方必将奉陪到底。